Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome back to Through the Keyhole. And today we have three very, very cool player camps to take a little look around, take a little tour off, and get a few ideas and a little bit of inspiration for some of our own builds. So, let's jump to it. Okay then, so usual couple of disclaimers before we kick things off. With the exception of this one here, these will not be my camps that we're taking a look at. These are the ones that I found via the brand new map marker system that was added in the latest update to 76. So let's have a look around these very, very cool camps some other people have built. And of course, if you guys would like to appear in a future episode of the series, you can send your camps in to me. Head on over to the channel's community page, as you can see here, and check out the post on there with all the details on how you can do that. So uh, let's jump into camp number one. So, kicking things off, we have a camp that is on the border between the Maya, the Savage Divide, and just on the corner of the Cranberry Bog as well. We're halfway up the cliff here, which is very, very cool. Nice little cliffside build. Lots and lots of detail in this one, which is always good to see. I do love uh, the use of the lights out front here. Lots and lots of uh, objects and bits and pieces sort of breaking up the otherwise empty spaces and blank walls and stuff, which is always cool. Nice little stairway there, giving access up to the main level of the camp. That's actually where you tend to spawn in down there, so uh, good thinking dropping a, a little way down there. So, we'll head up to a uh, sort of tiered veranda out here, which is cool. Lots and lots of little bits and pieces out here. Cool things to look at. I like that they've used reverse walls in some locations and walls the regular way around in others. It makes for uh, a nice little sort of contrast bit of wall. It makes the place look different and unique, which is always very cool. Lots and lots of stuff on the walls there, breaking up those otherwise blank surfaces, which is nice. All the vendors tucked around the side. Loads and loads of little bits of extra detail and decoration on here. You can see they've got the walls behind these vendors the usual way around, which allows for a nice little bit of feature walls on the inside. I do like that they haven't put any wallpaper on the outside of the sort of reverse walls here that we can see on the front as well. It kind of keeps that grimy, exposed to the wasteland look, which works really, really well here, even with all the splashes of colour and light. Got some very colourful camps today, actually, to be fair. So, Beckett's Bar under the staircase here, which got a nice little... Uh, Reasonably spaced out uh, entranceway here, giving access to the upper levels and straight through to what will be the crafting room as well. Come on in here. Nice and organised in here, really tidy. Fairly simple design. Nice few curtains over the windows, always a good addition. Break up the uh, textures, make the place look a little more complete. We've got doubled up doors there, you can see as well in the middle. One thing I might have done ever so slightly differently is maybe move some of this stuff away from the walls, but uh, that would have the drawback of not being able to move around so easily in here, so swings and roundabouts, really. But I do like this, everything you need, neat, tidy, organised, really, really cool. We'll progress on upstairs. I like the use of mixed textures here as well, in terms of using the glass walls as well, just let a bit of extra light in, make the place look a little bit more interesting. Nice little balcony on the side here that gives access to the top of the cliff there. There's not much going on up there apart from just access to further up the cliff, but uh, useful to have if you're coming in from that side as well. Loads and loads of decorations in here. Keeping that, uh, the place looking busy, looking homely and lived in. Very, very cool. Mixing up tons and tons of stuff here, posters and fashion act decorations and creatures and all sorts. It's really cool. Like the use of the skylights here as well, using the greenhouse roofs there, but only sparingly, mixing them in with the regular ones as well makes it a bit more interesting to look at. Same in this corner with the walls as well, which is cool. Nothing's too uniform, nothing is sort of standing out in a jarring way either. It works really, really well together. Very, very cool job there. Nice little vault door on the front there as well. We'll head on out. So we have got a shelter tucked out here, but I'm guessing it's a work in progress because there's a few bits in there, but not a huge amount. And obviously these uh, planters are not yet occupied either. So I'm guessing the homeowner here might not quite have finished this one off. However, it is looking very, very cool. Slocum's Jotine right on the top there as well. Just kind of completing those lines, which is really, really cool. I like this place a lot. And of course the lighting right here on the edge of the mire is pretty awesome as well. So great camp. Camp number two, uh, we are over in the forest here, and this one I kind of stopped and looked at because of its size. It is absolutely tiny, which is really, really cool. And we've talked about this a few times on stream and the like, uh, being able to pull off a really, really small, compact build is um, well, something that has to take advantage of shelters, but it looks really, really cool here. It's a nice job, a little two by two camp. Love the use of different angles on the roofs, different bits and pieces there, loads and loads of little bits of detail and decoration. Closing up the gap there next to the vendor as well, so you've got a kind of storefront vibe with lots and lots of detail and lots of things to uh, both catch the eye and to give that complete filled in look. A few little plants out there breaking up the front entrance, dirt floor on the way in. 
Only a couple of workbenches in here. Unfortunately, we can't get into this bedroom space. It's locked up. But you can sort of see what's going on in there. Yeah, we're only having a couple of workbenches out here. You've got the essentials if you're making a flying visit back to the camp. You can scrap whatever you need to, grab a bit of extra ammo, that sort of thing. But uh, if you need something a little more substantial, we'll have to head down to the shelter, which we'll do in a moment. A few extra bits and pieces on the edge of the cliff here with the, uh, the beehive and the chicken coop. Always good. Just again, expanding out the area whilst keeping the main structure quite small, which is cool. Just giving it a little bit more life to look at. I really like the way these posters on the wall just follow the line of the roof down as well. It's a subtle little detail, but it looks cool. Really kind of looks like it belongs nicely. Very cool. Breaking up that texture as usual. A little glass half wall down here as well, giving you that little view inside, which is always cool. Kind of see the inner workings almost, which I like that feeling. <laughs> it's cool. So taking a look at the shelter, relatively simple little design here. First space in the vault utility room here has just got the workbenches in it. Quick and easy to access if you do need to come down here. But lots of little bits of detail, breaking up the walls, adding a bit more interest. Everything looks like it belongs, which is really, really cool out here. Even that hay bale somehow works, <laughs> which is cool. Heading on inside, we've got a structure and I have no idea what to call this place, but it, it's cool. <laughs> Very kind of fancy, clean, posh looking place down here, but also a very strange idea. See a lot of really weird and wacky things done in shelters, and this is no exception, I like it a lot. We've got a very, very cute thing with our little sheep squatch plushie here squaring off against the uh, box hedge death claw. <laughs> I don't know what to make of this, but it's uh, adorable and funny and absolutely brilliant. Using this random space and uh, embracing the randomness, I guess. Nice use of the glass strip down the middle of the building as well. It breaks up the two halves, makes it cool. Nice little uh, variation in style there, which is very, very nice. It's a relatively simple use of the space, but very, very cool. Like it a lot. It's got a lot of personality, a lot of character. So, a really, really nice little shelter there. And we will head back upstairs. Take a little loop around the other side. Got lights and things out here as well, just to uh, illuminate the camp in the evening and generally make it stand out, make it look a little bit more like a feature. And a little peek into the sort of front porch area here. Always cool, mixing up sort of pieces and the structure a little bit, keeping it interesting. One thing I would have done to continue that mixing things up a little bit is maybe put an angled roof on the front there rather than having it square. But uh, it is very, very cool and does kind of encourage me to do something really, really sort of a micro build like this. It's very, very cool. I like that a lot. So, awesome job. And camp number three, the last one for the day, over at the White Springs Station. So, I'm sure you guys are well aware. Very, very popular place to build this, as uh, it's a frequently visited spot, so it's a good way to get people to see vendors. Unfortunately, the weather's not really complimenting this camp. Unfortunately, once it starts raining, uh, the colour kind of gets leached out of the game a bit, which is sad, effective. It's certainly uh, reminiscent of the, the weather in England, I don't know that much. But, uh, Sadly, it does take some of the colour out of the build, which is unfortunate because this is another very colourful build. But once we get inside, we'll see that a lot better. Loving the junk fences around the outside here, breaking up the shape, breaking up the textures a little bit, making it a bit more interesting to look at. There's uh, a few bits and pieces behind that one, so they're obviously providing a bit of protection there. No gateway in there or anything, though. you just got to jump over. So but It's just a few little bits and pieces. It's a uh, water purifier, a generator, that sort of thing. Little power armor station, a few extra bits and pieces outside available where you need them. But we come around the front to the main part of the camp, which is quite the feature. A lot of new bits and pieces from the current season here, and from the new Daily Ops as well. Somebody's obviously had a good bit of luck on that. So some really, really cool design work here. Really, really nice splashes of colour, little bits of interest. I like the way the steps lead up to the front there and just sort of lift you up this sort of small cliff here onto the higher patch of ground, which is cool. Somebody who's trying to hatch a death claw in the fire back there as well. <laughs> Lots and little, a little bit of a dip sort of detail and addition added to the vendors though, which is always cool. Makes them a bit more interesting, makes them blend in quite nicely as well, which is cool. Loads and loads of plants and lights and a little bit of decoration. Another vendor on this side, different style again, mixing things up. And we've got the new mannequins on display, making good use of those here. Some of you might have heard about the bugs on those, they are being worked on but it would seem that they only apply to people using duplicated outfits so uh, not too much to worry about if you haven't got any of those <laughs> but into the main structure which is very very cool there's some really really awesome stuff done in here love the details and the decoration lucky on the wendigo tube there definitely jealous want that and the rug on the floor lots and lots of cool bits and pieces loads of mixed decorations love this display in the center as well filling up that otherwise big open space and they've done a really cool thing here 
with the junk walls at the back to put a kind of semicircular shape to the back of this build, particularly with all the, the, ven the, the crafting stations around the front, lots of little details added on to those. But uh, obviously the foundations kind of push us towards building in squares a lot of the time, and using the junk fences like this has created a nice little angle that's different, which I really, really like. Tons and tons of little bits and pieces just tucked in every available gap here. So much detail, I absolutely love it. Stuff stacked on stuff. So much for the eye to uh, absorb, which is really, really cool. Another vendor tucked in there as well. Kind of blends in, you almost don't notice it until you sort of peer closely, I guess. Even the symptomatic, which can be awkward as heck sometimes, just fits in there nicely. The Wendigo tube kind of offsets that a little bit in some ways, because it's another big cylindrical object. Very, very cool. Lots and lots of bits out here as well. Tons of stuff on display. Loads of splashes of colour and mixing things up and all very, very cool. So much for the eye to focus on. It's a, a great little build. Lovely, lovely job of the decoration there. Impressive job getting that uh, poster to glitch onto the front of the vendor there as well. So very, very cool. Relatively simple structure with tons of decoration going an absolute mile, which uh, as I am fond of pointing out is always awesome to see. So, only three cams today. We'd uh, try and keep this one a little bit shorter and uh, actually get a video out promptly. But some awesome designs nonetheless, so massive props to everybody who has produced such wonderful cams. As I said, if you guys want to appear in a, a future episode, do head on over to the channel's community page. All the details are over there. But for now, massive thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please consider dropping subs and likes on It's always very, very much appreciated. Down below the video, you can find social media links of the merch store and channel memberships all available in the description if you're interested in supporting the channel in that way. It massively helps out and I hugely appreciate it. So massive thank you to everyone who's done that already. And if you get a chance to join us for live streams as well, we are finishing off Remnant from the Ashes this week and hopefully starting Mass Effect 2 at the end of the week as well. And of course, carrying on with Fallout, some cool stuff coming up on there as well. So I do hope you'll join us for those. For now, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.